Good afternoon. We'll be calling this meeting of the New Orleans Planning Commission to order. It's Thursday, September 26, 4.30 p.m. First item of the uh, 2.1 on plot. Consider for approval the final plot of the Polko edition. Okay, the um, applicant is uh, John Pullman. The property owner is Heiko. Um, you will need to look at the plat to see the legal description for the property. It is under the instrument of dedication. Uh, street address is 227 First South Street. Uh, the property location is south of First South Street and west of the bike trail. Uh, status of the plat, uh, City Council approved the preliminary plat with conditions at its September 3rd meeting. Uh, the deadline for a decision on the plat is uh, December 14, 2019. Uh, the land use designation for the property, according to the comprehensive plan, is industry. Surrounding land uses, per the comprehensive plan, is also industry. Zoning designation is I-2, General Industrial District, as is the surrounding property. The current site land use is property is vacant. It previously was used for storage purposes by Hyman Construction Company. Current area land uses include the following. To the west is the bike trail and Pullman Lumber Company. To the south and east is the former site of Hyman Construction Company. To the east are storage facilities and to the northeast the New Home Post Office. Description of what is being proposed is this is a plat of one lot totaling 0 0.85 acres intended to facilitate um, the sale of property from Heiko to Pullman Lumber Company. Um, status of utilities, um, water is located on the west side of Pullman uh, Lumber Company in First South Street, sanitary sewers in First South Street. Storm sewer is actually um, located on the east side of the property, uh, parallel to the bike trail, and there is an easement which identifies its location. Um, a park area is not required by the city's comprehensive plan. Uh, status of conditions that were identified at the time of preliminary plan approval I include the following, pay the platting fee of $180. That payment is pending. Provide an electronic file of the plat in an AutoCAD 2000 or newer format. That file has been provided and provide necessary utility easements. Those easements have been provided. Staff recommendation would be to approve the final plat since it complies with city code requirements. There would be one condition. The condition would be to pay the platting fee of $180. I would also note that um, at the time of preliminary plat approval, uh, we recommended to the property owner that they include in the plat um, a land area where the, uh, to the east where the storage facilities are located and the property owner declined um, to do so. Um, attachments include the final plat and an aerial photograph of the property. And then uh, motions are provided to both approve and deny the request. Okay, thank you. Good wishes. So Dave, you had, didn't we, we were talking, so the storage unit and that to combine them? as one is that what you're saying here no i the staff had suggested that they um plat it as a separate lot okay and this would have been the um most economical way to to do so um properties located in um uh, s the former South German Park are described using meets and bounds legal descriptions, and they can descriptions can get long and sometimes difficult to follow. And so, whenever possible, we encourage people to to plat those kind of properties. And you said, you and in this case, he just did not want to do so. You didn't want to do so. Yeah, and then when we don't have the ability to say you you must. Okay. But um, we it, asked. it more was a request. It was yeah. just more of a request. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
Okay, Wells. I make a motion to approve the final pat plot with conditions of. Do a motion. Looking for a second. A second. Okay, we have a motion and a second in approving the plot. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Moving down to 3.1, received communication from Tim Reiki, 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 or Reiki, I don't know how to say that, requested consideration for residential uses in the B2 service business zoning district. All right. Um, as you can see, the applicant is Mr. Tim Reiki. Um, and then you'll see a bunch of non-applicables um, on the um, kind of cover sheet. Uh, the reason being is that this, this item is for discussion purposes only, um, and if the Planning Commission uh, believes it would be appropriate to consider allowing residential uses, or would they consider allowing residential uses uh, in the B2 zoning district, um, if the Planning Commission did believe that was appropriate, um, staff would prepare a more detailed uh, more detailed information um, and present that at the next Planning Commission meeting. Um, but um, what Mr. Riki uh, is asking um, in the first attachment, which is the letter to the Planning Commission, uh, is he is asking a, a change in the B2 zoning district uh, to allow residential uses. Specifically, um, he is asking for the consideration um, for there to be a conditional use um, to allow first floor residential units um, in this B2 zone. Um, he uh, owns a property at 101 North Broadway, um, um, which is the reason this is brought up. Um, currently that property has four different units. Uh, two on The two units on the second floor are already apartment dwellings. The two units on the first floor um, are for commercial purposes. One is currently being used and will continue to be used. The other smaller unit um, is the one he um, um, notes in his letter that he's having uh, issues with um, renting out, and he doesn't uh, see a lot of interest, or he's not gaining, uh, getting a lot of interest in renting that out for retail purposes. So he'd like the Planning Commission to consider um, allowing a residential unit in that smaller space on the first floor. <coughs> the next attachment is an entire uh, zoning map of the city and what we tried to do here uh, is highlight in kind of a pinkish color um, the B2 zoning districts throughout the community um, but I think for today's uh, discussion purposes we're, we're trying to focus on uh, the downtown area in particular um, rather than in those um, B2 districts that are on more of the traffic corridors on, on the um, opposite ends of town and on, along 7th North. The third attachment is um, kind of a zoomed in zoning map um, of the subject property. Lost that one. Let's go to here then. <coughs> Following that, um, we put together a um, kind of an informational sheet for you all um, to consider this item and describe the three different uh, business districts within the city of New Alma, what their um, uses are that they are permitted um, as it pertains to residential purposes specifically. So really what we're considering here, um, first of all, is are we um, willing to consider residential uses in the B2 service district? Yes or no? So just to describe these districts just a little bit, the, in the B1, uh, that's the limited business district, um, that district is in, intended to kind of be that transition zone uh, between uh, residential district and, and the business um, districts. And it, um, it allows, um, I guess, it allows different businesses uh, in, that, in that district, um, but they're often businesses um, that are limited uh, in contact with people. Um, there's no manufacturing typically, um, exterior display or selling merchandise or kind of retail spaces. Um, 
in the B1, we do allow um, uh, we do allow residential uses. Um, so, like was explained at the last planning commission meeting, the city has uh, a pyramid uh, style of zoning. So, all of those R3 um, uses are allowed in the B1 district. So it could be anything from single family um, through multifamily uh, uses in that district. Um, and then in the B2 district, um, the intention of this district is to provide more of a wide range of services and goods which might, not, uh, which might be incompatible with the uh, permitted uses in the retail districts. Now, um, in this district, the permitted uses would be things like automobile sales, car lots, laundries, service stations, repair shops, um, printing shops, restaurants, offices, bowling centers, uh, bakeries, <coughs> and theaters, um, but often it limits the amount of people that are allowed uh, to work uh, or be employed in those businesses. So typically they're smaller businesses uh, in this district. Um, but if, if in this district specifically, there's no residential uses allowed at all, neither por permitted nor by conditional use permit. That's the district we're discussing today. The third one, the, the B3 district, um, is designated um, to accommodate uh, kind of that central retail and office activities, um, and which are of kind of citywide and regional significance with a wide variety of, of retail options for people to visit. Um, now in the B3, we do, uh, we do allow um, apartment units as a conditional use. Um, uh, so, but it's not a permitted use. So, um, every, anybody that wants to have a residential dwelling unit, uh, in the B3 would need to come and apply for a conditional use, um, to do that. So, um, just a few other notes. So just kind of sum that up. Currently we allow residences in the B1, um, limited business district as a permitted use and then a conditional use in the B3 um, business district. And the B2 district specifically does not allow residential uses. So the B3 would be like the downtown area where we allowed apartments in the back and retail in the front, am I correct? Okay, in the uh, B3 zoning district, um, you know, in the past, we've approved conditional use permits for apartments on the second floor of buildings. And then with um, Mr. Bodie's building on Center Street, we modified that to allow a percentage of the first floor to be used for apartments, and he installed um, two apartments in that building. We also allow freestanding um, residential buildings, apartments. And um, city center apartments would be a good example um, of that. So um, we allow a range of different types of residential uses. I think what we've been attempting to do is to uh, promote, um, you know, residential development kind of on the periphery of the downtown area. Um, so it's not covered in the zoning, but it's the conditional use is how we get. It's past um, it. it's allowed as a through a conditional use permit process so we allow apartment units or apartment dwellings is the term i believe that's used and we did one uh, probably about two years ago on first uh, south wasn't it there between minnesota street and german street yes we did and that was a former business yeah that was a conversion about four years ago we did one uh, for mr oppitz for a residential one there as use. well. We've done yeah, some so on we, buildings done. Um, in the um, in the downtown area on the second floor. I bet we've done you know four or five. And in a lot of cases, those previously were used as um, dwelling units, and then sometimes they've been transitioned into offices and. Then their use as offices, um, you know, the interest has diminished, you know, and so then some people want to convert it back to, um, you know, a residential unit. 
So he could do conditional use if he wanted to, but would rather have us change the zoning? Or no, he couldn't. No. Okay. No. The, that is permissible. only allowed in the B3 zoning okay. district. So if you look at um, the zoning map uh, that was included as an attachment, you know, the bright red area is the <laughs> B3 zone and the, um, I'm going to call it a pink, that represents the uh, B2 I'm correct the building we're speaking of is this uh, next to the cults corner yeah, it's right mm -hmm. across the street from yeah. here yeah. yeah it's a former cults corner but right building. next door to it no yeah. no the, that's the, it the main oh yeah, yeah. And, w and when he uses the term four units what he's referring to is those are really just four building spaces it's not actual residential units there are two residential units upstairs but one of those units is a um, business location. <coughs> is it currently rented now as a business? No. So what one unit one is. One, one unit. unit is, but one unit is vacant, vacant. and that's the one that he would convert. Yeah. Is this the one closest to New Old Tire then? Or, or I right? think it's the one in the back. Oh, in the back. Yeah. Yeah. Like the garage or something? Something in that area, yeah. You know, I think, uh, John, didn't you look at the square footage? It was 450 square feet. It wasn't a real big space. Right. Uh, it was roughly 34% of that, that main floor space. So basically, you want our opinions. Well, no. Real, um, it's your decision, ultimately, um, if you want to proceed with... Um, um, allowing, you know, residential uses, um, you know, in the B2 zoning district. And I think what we're suggesting is maybe we initially focus on the downtown area and then um, um, go from there. There's a particular reason this particular case is not requiring a public hearing. This is just if we work. were to make a change, it would have to be done by ordinance, have. and uh, an ordinance would require a public hearing. Have we had similar requests in the past? No. Not that I'm aware of. El, what I, have you? I not, it's not in the B2, no. I mean, generally, it's downtown in the B3 district we have. Yeah. Well, property on Broadway is worth, worth so much. <laughs> That property right there and where he's actually talking about the apartment isn't worth squat for a business. But the problem is how do you move forward because it's going to come up down the road about, you know, how do we start something and, you know, is it going to... Try to be consistent, is that how you're saying? Yeah. I mean, I'd love to, that if he could use that for an apartment in the back, but like I said, you know... I, or maybe we won't get that many requests just because the fact is, like I said, <coughs> on Broadway, I mean, it's worth a lot of money, just especially right there. It's a, such a nice location. But I kind of get in the back part of his business. He ain't going to have no activity back there. But On the opposite corner of that block, uh, is that not where Noam Dental is? Yes. And in the buildings between there and Noam Dental or between Noam Dental and Noam Tire, are there not apartments above some of those spaces right now? Yes, there are. Which is also in B2. Yeah. Okay. But those were um, grandfathered in. Okay. I mean, they're part of the original building. Right. You know, that was constructed. And most of those buildings were constructed again prior to 1968. So there really is a precedent in the area for NB2 for there to be buildings like this that have apartments. Yeah. yeah. But this is going, his request is different from the standpoint that I don't believe any of those buildings have first floor apartments at the present time. That's probably Correct. true. Yeah. Correct. So in today's thing, they would not meet the requirements as they stand today if they're not changed. That is correct. Why 
I wouldn't want to make no changes unless it has to do with the back part of their buildings. You know, basically, almost like we did downtown. You still got your storefronts up front. That's the money issue, you know, right there. That's the, do you really, you know, I don't know. Down the road, we might be facing this challenge where businesses are going to be cutting off their business in the, in the back and in the front. We might have to deal with this all the time now on Broadway. Down the road, who knows? So we maybe want to pursue this and probably put conditions on it for uses of those buildings. I don't know. Or are we going to open up a whole can of worms? I sure don't want to take a storefront and make a, oh, apartments out of it. Yeah. In the back part of it, I could probably see. Yeah. Or second story. Or se Well, of course, second story. And the, right. you, know, you got all your new developments anyhow, and they're going to be second story. You got businesses right below it. I mean, right. all of your new development areas are apartments above and businesses below. Right. But you hate to have it right where prime downtown it would be apartments sitting right on Broadway versus a business. Well, I would note that it's, you know, possible to write an ordinance with those kind of restrictions in it. So how many properties would we potentially be talking about that could be turned into this in the future for on Broadway or in that district? You know, throughout our Well, probably a fair number. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you look at the zoning map again, um, that's, that's a lot of buildings. I don't know that all of them would be set up, you know, to accommodate that kind of use. Well, one I can think of would be the church on 1st South there, or 2nd South. Correct. Yeah would be a prime candidate. The uh, former Episcopal Church, yeah. the other one? Yeah. Yep. I can think of a couple other maybe challenging properties that, you know, just, you know, I don't know their physical address here just at the moment, but, uh, you know, then, then we have them to deal with too. On, you know, but if we would do it by conditional use permit and case by case and set conditions, but you know, as long as it'd be in the rear. Well, with today's changing market, maybe we have to change our zoning every so often. You know, it's just let's put it this way: who would be against it right now if that whole block went and a person put up a nice apartment building with no businesses on the bottom? Everybody right here would probably say, "Yeah, bring it in. We're gonna love it." Yeah. But or would they? Maybe not. Maybe everyone say, "Keep it." You know. So maybe we got to pursue it and just say with the conditional use permit and try to figure out some wordage where it would work in the back part of the businesses and not take the main floor. Maybe see a plan from them for his proposed building. I, I think, yeah, that that would be easy to put together. You know, I um, mean, bring it back for, you know, maybe we could do a review of his plan and yeah, but I, I, at this point, what you're doing, though, is you're setting um, a, um, regulations in place that would allow this to take place with other B2 properties as well. And again, we're suggesting starting in the downtown area. Yeah. So, um, you know, well, this is the individual that has initiated this action. It impacts other yeah, properties I, yes. as well. Get that. I so we too. could say just certain B2, not all B2 in the city, just certain ones that they we could require a conditional use permit. Yeah, for that. They, you they could structure just, it that They couldn't way. just do it under our conditions. They would have to have the conditional use. Yeah. Or structure it that if it's a B2, say adjoining or across the street from a B3. Well, you could do that, or you could be very specific as to um, the location. Um, by legal description. Um, I guess that's something that would have to be reviewed with the uh, city attorney. So what Jeff was talking about, could, you know, is it possible that he, his, if he had to direct the staff to put an ordinance together with X amount of conditions? Yeah, could we, we could do that. specify the conditions today? Um, well, you, th that's one option if you'd like to do that. The other is that we could put some conditions uh, together and bring it back bring to it you back. for your review. 
and not have any, you know, not vote on anything or don't have mm-hmm. back. Well, I mean, we might decide at the end that this ain't worth it. Right. Yeah. You know. Other than to direct them to put something together. Correct. But, yes. but we we first wanted to find out if if this was if something that to. was of interest to you or not. So before we go down the road a little bit further, we wanted, you know. And we may get feedback saying don't do it. Sure. Or go ahead with it, you know. Yeah. yeah. Somebody on the streets might come up and have a good reason why not to or why to do it. Mm-hmm. I'd say there's interest. <laughs> so that gives a little bit of time factor. Yeah. Unfortunately, you know, this might this might take three, four months before it comes back. Two months. Well, I would hope that we'd be able to have something back to you by next month's meeting. So Sounds good. On the larger map, just to clarify, it's all the pink areas. Yeah. B2 is um, all the pink areas. Yeah, that's quite a bit. And again, I don't know if you specify between State Street and German Street from 3rd North to 1st South. You know, I don't know if that, like you say, contains enough of what's close to downtown uh, that if, as far as a starting point. Yeah, just I'd a, like to just talk to the city attorney to sure. find out what would be the best way to approach that. Right. I guess just an initial impression if the existence of apartments already uh, is on that side of that block anyway, although be it that they were grandfathered in, I understand. Um, we're not, uh, I guess, in this instance, uh, entertaining the thought of something that doesn't already exist. Right. I understand we're allowing it as a new request uh, in that zone. And so, I, again, I think it's worth uh, some further, you know, studying and looking into. But I'm just saying it's it, it does already exist there anyway, so... So all it is at this time is a conversation. Right. Right. Well, they still need some direction. If they can give us direction, we can come back with what we don't okay, like so, and what we but, like. Well, it's, um, I think um, uh, the, staff, uh, the staff's understanding that you would like us to pursue this further. And so we will put together a, um, a sample ordinance with um, language that would um, allow for this type of use um, on the first floor of buildings in the B2 area, you know, downtown. So do you, ha- do you have what you need now just from our discussion or do you need a motion requesting help? Um, I think we have enough direction okay. from the uh, commission to proceed. Okay. I guess I'm gonna ask the staff maybe look at what other communities have done too, if there's any examples out there, you know, I mean, just possibly, okay. You know, sure. If they've seen challenging properties that people have come for requests, and you know, if there is anything out there, and we can look at what kind of conditions the other cities, you know, have pursued. What works, what doesn't work, or can we do this as uh, as a possible, put this as an interim, you know, type uh, conditional use permit. As a case by case. Well, you you have that um, option with the conditional use. It's just that with the conditional use, once you grant that request, it's permanent. So like, could it, we put it? It as runs a, with the property. Could we put it as an interim? Um, I guess I'd have to check to see if that's years. been done. Well, I I have my. But we could set conditions and see if it's working. And well, you also could do that with a conditional use okay. permit too. But. Just, just a thought, you know. Anything else wish to discuss on that one before we move on? If not, we will move on to 3.2. Discuss requests from city council to investigate land uses in the area bounded by South Broadway, 12 South, uh, 12 South Front and 20th South Streets. Okay, I'd like to uh, begin the staff report uh, under the uh, project um, description. Um, The City Council at their September 17th meeting considered the request of Arlen and Susan Body to rezone and amend the comprehensive plan, uh, the property that's located at 1703 South Minnesota Street. Um, The legal description of this property is lot 14, block 48 south. As you 
may remember they had requested rezoning um, of a single lot from I-2 to B-3, an amendment of the comprehensive plan from industry to high-density residential. Uh, the request was unanimously um, denied by the City Council on a 4-0 vote. As part of uh, the City Council's motion denying the request, they um, directed the Planning Commission to further study land use in this general area of the community. And um, in particular, I guess they wanted to look at the possible location of residential uses in industrial zoning district. And so the staff um, arbitrarily um, kind of defined an area to be looked at, and that's um, the area that was described uh, by the chair. Um, so I guess the staff is interested in receiving further direction and comment uh, from the Planning Commission on this matter. I would note that um, there is a deadline for this decision, and it was 60 days from the date of the uh, City Council meeting, so that puts us November 15th. There is a city council meeting on November 19th, so you know if um, the commission has a recommendation or some thoughts on this matter, that would also that would be an appropriate meeting to uh, kind of use as a as a goal. Um, I guess at this time I just ask uh, Councillor Mack if he can maybe um, provide us with some further information on you know, what the council was looking for from the planning commission um, on this. Thanks, Dave. I guess just reading what you've got written here, you know, you've got 12th South and then South Valley to 20th South, South Broadway as part of the study area. And I guess from the council standpoint that night, I was leaning towards 17th to 17th South and Minnesota Street to what would it be 19th South? Uh, in Minnesota Street by the former uh, brick and tile yard and then from Minnesota Street to German Street to look at that development there as currently it's I-2 and if we could look at possibly coming up with designating that area you know for some sort of oversized garage or man cave with living quarters in that area. I don't really feel it's a prime industrial site as far as uh, future development within the community, just my out loud thought. Uh, but, you know, we already have storage buildings and uh, nothing's been done with the property um, for those couple blocks. And if we can find options, you know, and designate just that area. I wasn't looking for like Valley Street where all the other sheds were at this point in time. I haven't been approached by anybody for living there in Noah's unless staff has some thoughts on that. No, I, I think um, we were, you know, we've listened to the council discussion and it, um, um, kind of covered a uh, fairly broad area, so we were sure. more looking for something perhaps more specific that yeah. would uh, help us um, mm -hmm. in our um, analysis. Uh, yeah, and I'm just thinking we start with this particular area and see if we can find something and we adopt that particular area, and maybe it's we're talking to all the adjoining <coughs> property owners. One, there's one majority owner there and then the bodies and probably a handful on German Street. And it'd be nice to hear their feedback. Um, and maybe we can work something out. Are you talking another zoning area? Or would you know? I think leave it I-2, but then allow this particular I-2 to allow, say, some sort of living uh, space but then we'd have to put some sort of conditions on there you know that you're not going to come back with to the city you know that you've you know you've got a known uh, 
shredder across the street and there's noise vibrations smells etc yeah. you know and we have to come up with those types of conditions that aren't going to come back to haunt us yeah all of a sudden i have a business down there and i've been there for 20 years and all of a sudden somebody comes in and builds five six of those homes and all of a sudden the property owners complain because the fact is the original property owner forgot about what the conditions he signed and all of a sudden it comes back and says well we got all that and it raises everybody's eyebrows saying well and i'm sitting there saying well this is actually industrial probably you shouldn't have barely built there correct yeah. mm -hmm. you know and i'm looking at 17th you know it's separated by the boundary you know there but across the street we have our our three across the street currently it's not as close as to that you know recycling center well, for me, I, I've got to be up front. There's a big key area there that is a big, big, big problem for me, and that's in the Willem Steel cycle. How quick we forget. Oh, we got all the complaints from all the people about all the noise and the explosions, and our houses are vibrating, and that's all in that same, right, the fact it's right in the middle of that. Um, it's gotten a lot better. But when you have that type thing in a residence, if you're going to have residents in the area, I'm supportive of some of this where they want to have toy sheds and they have a residence, but I'm totally against it in that area where that business is in there. Very interrupt. We, we, we can't forget of all the problems that we had and went through in the city. And you in the city, in the city council, you, you, you know it. You, mm -hmm. you saw it. And they talked about our houses are vibrating and it's too noisy and it's smelly and all that good stuff. So that one is, you got to convince me that it's good to put a residence anywhere as close to that. Mm -hmm. I mean, for me, with anything within five, six blocks of it. Yeah. But, and I understand if we want to try to create more tax revenue, but maybe this is the wrong way to do it. I don't know. I think uh, there's places around town that you do, places where we could have these toy sheds and we could have a residence, you know, one above, and that's something we would have to change to do. But I think there's some out there already. But uh, but this area is a danger zone for me to even consider it. Would be just being up front. Yeah, I agree. Okay, so w why doesn't um, staff um, take a look at um, options um, for this area? Uh, we can also investigate um, what um, other cities have done, and we will um, think you, uh, Councillor or Mac, uh, suggested that we contact the League of Minnesota Cities. So um, we have made some uh, inquiries, uh, and so we can do that, and we can uh, check out some other locations and see what, um, what they are doing, and then we can report back at the next meeting. And then at that time, you can um, make a decision, um, I guess, on uh, a recommendation to the city council on this subject. So will this come back? We're looking at it now as that whole area. Last meeting, there was a request for one lot. Is that going to come back separately? No. Okay. That request was denied. So okay. um, we're look we're we're going to look at uh, what look appears to be a two block area. Yeah. Okay. And it might come back, you know, that maybe we just look at Minnesota Street and we don't do German Street, you know, as a buffer zone. You've yeah. got the, vac you know, you've got a vacated alley there as a buffer or something. You know, just you know, you know, because if we have the manufacturing across the street, you know, directly affected there, or we say we have to have more sheds directly in front of the recycling and further down we might allow something and we feel that future businesses have enough other areas to go to that we wouldn't be you know I don't want someone to not come in with the business because there's a house across the street or something like that mm -hmm. so but obviously we feel there's enough other land available for that yeah we can take a look at um, our um, current industrial lot supply you know I mean we already and took a uh, B2 there and made a church out of it down on that end on the 20th, right? Yeah. Yep. And we've got restaurants and we've got uh, a and hotel. We've got the guy that built the house with the big thing across the street there, too. That's on 1600 blocks. Yes. That's a little further away. Yeah. yeah. That's across, you know. 
Yeah, well, and, and you know what? Businesses and churches and everything else are a little bit different because they don't stay overnight. You're not sleeping yeah. there. Yeah. They're permanent, you know. What's the property on 16th across the street from that oversized shed on 1600 block? Is that I-2 next to the storage? R3. You, that's R3. So right next door to New Home Steel and Recycling is R3, right next to the bicycle trail. There's a vacant land there, right? There's a half block. Half that's block a that's vacated there. That's R3 right next to the steel yard. Yeah, although our comprehensive plan has that designated for industry. So um, the comprehensive plan and the our zoning uh, map don't line up there. So, so that's some. But so someone could build an apartment building there. Um, someone could build an apartment. You know, so we already have that right there. Yeah, but it's it's supposed to be changed. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, so, you know, we have some cleanup probably work to do. Or, oh, are those lots done. even for sale? No. Yes. Everything's for sale? Okay. No. Everything's for sale. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So what are we looking at? Just tabling this until the next meeting, or we want some recommendations? We're, we're giving staff some input of... Some yeah, do... Do the other, uh, you know, Councilor Mack has, um, you know, provided us with some direction. Do members of the commission, um, is there anything that you would like to see us explore with regards to this subject? Well, you know, it may come forward that we might have different parts of the town that want to do this too. Well, that's what I was going to say. Do we want to limit it to such a small area? I don't know. I think right now this is Doesn't where we have a direction because we have had a time frame on it of 60 days. Yeah. And, you know, and we don't want to hold up these property owners, you know, you know, if they want to come up with some sort of use for their property, you know, at this point in time. Why is there a 60-day limit? Because what we just... What the request made you have to make a response? No, that was established by the city council. Right. Okay. I guess they didn't want um, the subject to be studied uh, indefinitely, and they wanted to... Direct they, when, they, when they referred it, they also put a deadline on it. Yeah. Yeah. I guess I want to go into it with an open mind and, you know, that we've researched both sides and that staff contacts the property owners down there and, you know, see what their feels are. If the majority of them say, no, I don't want that on those two blocks, you know, you know I want to keep it for manufacturing, then, you know. Okay. Um, we could maybe use some direction then. Sure. Uh, who are we contacting? I guess the probably the largest owner would be no one stealing and recycling of the current property down there, right? Mrs. Lundberg? Mm hmm. But she owns a bunch of lots. Correct. Right. Next to the thing, right? Minnesota Street, uh, the German Street she owns. Yeah. But who else besides. Do we uh, have some storage units if they would have any concerns? Okay. Possibly. There must be what four four of them so you're saying with within this 17th to 19th minnesota street to german area that we should contact those people i think so just to say yes i'd like to see a change or no i wouldn't want, like to see a change okay and i guess if we're going to look at it and and then go into it from there you know then we got to put certain conditions out there if we're going to designate that, that area that, you know, it protects staff and it protects the business across the street that, mm -hmm. you know, if we would go that route or not. But I'd like to hear what other cities are doing, you know, if they've had challenges. And okay. We'll do our best. Okay. Good enough. Then we shall move down the trail here. Item uh, 3.3, .3, City Council decision concerning the Planning Commission matters of September. Okay, at the September 3rd meeting, um, I'm not going to repeat items that we, um, we discussed as part of um, the agenda. Um, they approved um, the request of Jim Sheeman for three variances. Uh, to allow him to construct a um, private storage facility on the property at 1106 North Spring Street. Uh, they approve the uh, request of Virginia Sucre Molden 
um, to allow the operation of a float tank therapy business at 1010 Southridge Road. And then um, that uh, completed it for that particular meeting. At the September 17th meeting, um, this isn't a planning commission item, but they passed a resolution of support for the continued exploration and planning for the Minnesota River State Trail by the Department of Transportation and the Department of Natural Resources, which are state agencies, on the south side of a new and expanded um, U.S. Highway 14 from New Ulm to Nicollet. And then they um, set the uh, preliminary 2020 uh, budget levy, and it was not to exceed 5%. And the truth and taxation meetings will be held on December 3rd and with, um, if necessary, a follow-up meeting on December 10th. Um, I believe the levy was ended up at 4.2, 4.27. And I would note that uh, the budget cannot go up from there, but it can go down. So... Um, and then uh, truth and taxation notices are mailed out to all property um, tax uh, owners in the city, y you know, uh, advising them of what that increase would mean as far as uh, their taxes are concerned. That's it. Hey, <coughs> anything from the Heritage Preservation? Um, we did not have a meeting this month, but we are meeting up at Herman with the architect, um, SHPO representatives, and the grant representatives to kind of get a direction on what we're going to be looking at for the Herman Monument here in the future. That's next Friday. That's it. That's it. One other item, if I can just briefly um, mention, is that um, our November meeting date falls on Thanksgiving. And so um, we're, we have tentatively moved the week up, or I'm sorry, the meeting up a week to November 21st. At this time, we don't have any agenda items that we're aware of, but um, if there were to be any, that's when we would try to schedule the meeting, obviously subject to having a quorum present. Um, our December meeting falls on the 26th, so we'll have to see how, how that goes. Okay, that's it. Anything yeah. else? Well, if not, there's no other agenda, agenda items. Again, I'd like to thank all of you for participating. We had a good discussion, and we need that in order to solve these type things. So thank you, and meeting adjourned.